Hi everybody and welcome to my brief tutorial about how to use track changes in Microsoft Word. Track changes allows all changes to a Word document to be recorded so that when there are multiple people reviewing or changing a file they can easily see what's changed between versions. The comments function is really helpful for flagging up queries about things in the text or explaining changes made in a bit more detail. So without any further ado, let's open Microsoft Word. I'm using Word 2016 for Mac, so the display might be slightly different from the version of Word you're using, but the general principles should be roughly the same. So here we have just a normal document. No changes have been carried out to it yet. This will be what your document looks like when you've just done your first draft of something. If we click on the Review tab at the top here, we can see the Track Changes function. At the moment, it's greyed out and turned to off. We want to turn this to on so that all the changes are being recorded. There we go. If you have a look down in the toolbar here as well, you can see that there's a message telling you whether track changes is on or off, and you can actually turn it on and off from this menu. This is really useful if you're doing things in other tabs, like messing about with the styles or inserting a table. You can easily see at a glance whether track changes is on and just turn it off from there without having to go into the review menu. So with track changes now enabled, let's see what happens when we make changes to the text. So if I insert some text here, you can see that it is red and underlined and it's clearly visible that something has been added here. Likewise, if I delete some text, you can see that it gains a strike through effect. What if I wanted to explain why I deleted something? Well, that's where the comment function comes in handy. I can highlight the section that I want to comment on just press new comment here and then I can just type in my query here. So that's how to turn track changes on and to write a comment and that's pretty straightforward. But what happens when you receive uh, an edited file which has already had changes tracked within it? So let's have a look at this document. So your first impressions might be that it looks a little bit messy. Um, there's things inserted in the text, there's things crossed out in the text, there's comments at the side. You're probably wondering if you're going to have to sit through 80,000 words and try and make sense of it. I've got some good news for you. You don't. First things first, though, what happens if you open your edited document and you actually can't see any of the changes? First of all, don't panic. The most likely reason for that is that your display options are set not to show any markup. If we go back into our review tab here and look to the right of the track changes button, you'll see a menu like this. This controls the different types of display for track changes. At the moment, this document is set to all markup. What happens if we just choose simple markup? Okay, so here we can see this looks a bit clearer. Um, deleted text isn't shown, but inserted text is still visible, and so are the comments. You can take it one step further and do no markup. And as you can see, it just looks like a normal document now. You can't see any of the comments and you can't see any of the changes. That does make it much more easy to read, but not overly helpful if you're wanting to accept or reject changes on an individual level. So let's go back to all markup and see if there's any way we can make the changes look a bit more pleasing to the eye. If we have a look underneath the menu that we were just playing about in, uh, this markup options menu, we can see there's a number of options that we can change. For example, we can turn off the, the display of formatting changes altogether, or we can turn off insertions or deletions. And even more interestingly, we can choose what things we want to show in the text, which is called inline, and which things we want to show in balloons at the side. If we click here to show revisions in balloons, you can see that all the deleted text now appears at the side instead of in the text, and that helps to make it a lot more easy to read, as you can see. You can play around with the options till you find something that works for you. The bubbles are good for reducing clutter in the text, but on the flip side, you could end up with quite a lot of bubbles on the side, which means that your comments can get lost among the other things. 
if you've got multiple people working on a document, you can actually choose whose changes and comments you want to see by going back to the markup options and finding them in this reviewers tab. Only I've been working on this document, so I'm the only name there present at the moment. But if you have multiple people who have changed it, you can choose whose changes are displayed. So let's just say we found a display that we're happy with and we want to work like this. But that red colour, it's pretty harsh, isn't it? And wouldn't it be good if you could see insertions and deletions in different colours? Well, you can. If we go into Markup Options and click Preferences down here, you can change your display options to various different colours. So if we just change some of these. Let's see. There we go. Now we can see that things are appearing in the text in a different colour. Um, this only changes the options for you, it won't change it for anybody you send your document to. Um, the changes made to the display preferences are what are called local changes. So whoever's getting your document, they'll just see the changes in whatever their own settings are. However, this means that when you're going through, you can see things a bit more easily and choose a colour scheme that suits you. Now depending on how you and your editor are working, you might want to go through every change individually and decide whether to accept or reject it. This can be quite time consuming if there's a lot of changes to a document, so just be prepared for that. To do that, you use the accept and reject buttons here, which are the, to the right of the markup options. You can choose to accept each one individually, or you can accept en masse by doing accept all changes here. You can actually use the display options here to control track changes and the accepting of changes. If you um, decide that you only want to accept formatting changes, we can just remove it so that the only changes being shown are formatting changes. Go to accept and choose accept all changes shown. This will then mean that any formatting changes are accepted, but when you go back and do these, you can see that the insertions and deletions are still present. You can also reject changes if you want to, and the navigation buttons here help you to go through the document. The similar premise for comments, you can use these buttons to the left of the track changes options to navigate through the various comments. If you want to reply to a comment, you can click this little button here, and you'll see a little reply box appears here and you can just type in an answer. Track changes is a very powerful feature but it can lead to quite a lot of clutter and screen mess. If you're making global changes, say you want to change double quotes to single quotes throughout a whole manuscript, I'd really recommend turning track changes off as otherwise you end up with a huge amount of changes to wade through as well as a really messy looking document. So that's just a, a quick look at, at track changes. Um, I hope this has been useful and you feel a bit more confident in dealing with them. Um, if you have any feedback on this video or any questions, please get in touch with me. My details will be on the screen in a moment. And thank you for watching.